Welcome to Deep Natter. This episode wasn't meant to be an episode. It started as one of our pre-show chats, just Sean and I talking before we jumped into what we actually planned to talk about, which now completely escapes me. But as it's happened so many times before when we talk, we went off on a tangent. And this time, it was a deep one around worth and value and the often paralyzing fear of showing ourselves to the world through the things that we make. Here we go. Yeah, I told Adrian the other day, yesterday, day before yesterday, uh, I said, I'm, I'm going to do what I do for one more year. And, and if I don't see any growth or movement or, or change, um, I'm dumping it all. And I'm just going to go get a job somewhere and forget about it. Wow. Because I can't keep beating myself up about it. That's pretty huge. Yeah. Is that like a is that like a long time coming? That's not just like a, a way you feel today. That's a thought out like. No, it's been coming for a while. It's been coming for a while. You know, I've, I've been doing this for 10 years. The, the, the podcast stuff, you know, I've been painting roughly about well, a little bit longer off and on. And I feel like if it doesn't. If it doesn't go, if it doesn't start to change, I don't know what else to do. Because I'm, I've tried a bunch of different things. I've tried to go in different directions. I've tried, you know, to to approach it differently, and I still end up in the same space. I still end up at roughly the same level that I have been for years. But what what do you mean change? What would have to change? I mean, what about what you do now doesn't make you happy? It's not a matter of making me happy. No. It's not it's 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 not a matter of making me happy. It's it's uh it's a it's a I think it and, and I don't know if I'm going to include this stuff. I don't know yeah, how yeah, yeah. relevant yeah. it might be, but you know, it comes down to you know, I I just in fact, let me hold on, let me let me see here. Let me let me look. Yeah, okay. So for the first time since I've been on Twitter, I mean on Instagram, which has been since 2012, I just crossed 3,000. Just. Wait, I, I, we, pro- we probably won't use this because I'm, I'm going to come straight at you. <laughs> so, so like, yep. you know that's bullshit. You know that doesn't matter. But I don't. Do you not know that? No, it, we because on so some... Much. It, we do talk about it so much, but, but the, the reality of it is... The larger the number of followers, the more people see what you share. Yes. That's a fact. Yes. Well, on, on, in, on the internet, yes. Yes. But you also know the quality of eyeball on the internet, right? So that number is not a real number but, of people who care yeah, about your work. I'm on the internet. You're on the internet. And of my followers, whatever number that is, I probably got maybe 30 or 40 people I care about as eyeballs on my work. I couldn't care about the rest. So if I only had those 30 or 40 who really were engaged and really cared about what I was doing that, and, and who were interacting with the work and were feeding back to me, that would genuinely be fulfilling. And to dump another thousand Sure it would, but it wouldn't pay that, your rent. No, but I, um, that's true, obviously. But I, I think that's a separate issue. Like if it's about, if it's about money, I, I get it. Like, of course, like you've, got to, you've got to make ends meet for yourself with what you make. And that's, that's an... A, a definitely a consideration but in terms of like i've only got three thousand people looking at what i make that's not enough to make me feel fulfilled like i'm i'm reaching enough people you also know that the internet isn't really it's not reaching people the way you want to reach them anyway so so taking that number too seriously is i mean you've got a lot more followers than a lot of people most people uh, i understand that i understand that but that's that's largely irrelevant but what's what's you know? what's the relevance of it then? Like why 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 when I asked you because we've done this before? Like why when I asked you what it was? Was it the number straight away? Because the numbers determine how many people actually see the work, how many people actually see w- what I'm doing at any given moment. And I may have the conversations, and I've said this several times. I may have the conversations with the people that I that I do for me and that's true i approach people that i find interesting it's not because of their following or or their you know whatever 
I approach people that I find interesting. I have the conversations for me, yeah. but releasing those conversations to an audience has another component. There's another reason for it. And if, you know, I, I've, I've been, I've been giving this stuff away for a decade Yeah, and it costs money. I have, I, yeah. I, when I talk to somebody, if they have books out, I buy their books. Yeah. There's podcast hosting, there's equipment costs, there's gear costs. Like there's, there's yeah. all this stuff that I've sunk into this and I've painted myself into a corner of, of giving it away for nothing for so long that people think I don't need the money. And that's not your fault. That's just the internet model, isn't it? We all, we all kind of do that. Um, yeah. And you're in that, you're in that weird space really where, where I don't think anyone would say you're, you're like, you know, you're not Joe Rogan level podcast successful, but you're also, and I never will be, but you're also, you're also no podcast slouch and you have, you have a, I don't, I don't know if it's modest, actually. I think you have a reasonable size engaged audience who really care about what you do in that podcast space, but something about that isn't, isn't fulfilling you or isn't enough to keep going. But, but again, it has nothing to do with my personal fulfillment in doing the work. And to be honest, at least in terms of audience engagement, I've never put that to the test. What, what do you mean? I've never said, okay, here's the deal. If you are so engaged and want to somehow contribute to the longevity of what I do, here's a place where you can show me that monetarily. Yeah, it won't work. It, it, it won't work. And I know that because I've done that. So, so on my YouTube yeah. channel, um, there's now YouTube has a built in function where you can uh, hit the join channel button. And that, that donates right. $5 a month, which, of which I get $3 a month. Now, with 300 right. and f no, what am I talking about? Almost 500,000 subscribers. I've, I've talked about it once and I, I mentioned at the end of every video on a, on a tech slide that you can do that. I have probably about 120 people from almost half a right. million who are willing to actually financially support me. It won't work. Right. So maybe people aren't getting all the way to the end of the video so they don't see that slide and they're not aware of it. That, that could be it. Nah. I mean, it, that wouldn't explain that ratio, would it? I mean, it's, it's not probably not. It's, I think it's entitlement. I think people have in their minds, and I'm guilty of this too, if I see it on the internet, I'm supposed to get it for free. And I think people yeah. don't think deliberately enough about supporting artists whose work they like. And then they complain yeah. when you disappear. If you disappear, people will moan about it. Like, why did you go? Yeah, what you were doing for was a so week. brilliant. No, well, the, no, for a week. They'll care. I mean, people still moan about OTP going away. Like, people remember. They do care. But again, you're right. Do you care enough to support this so it can keep going? That's the key. That's the question. Because you don't get it for free forever. No. And if I throw everything behind a paywall, I'll have 10 listeners. Yep. So would I. I, I, I would have a handful of viewers of videos if I threw it behind a paywall. Yeah. I mean, there are a couple people who have been very adamant about put up a way for us to give you money and we'll do it. And, and I think a few people would, and I, and I, God love them. I appreciate that level of, of wanting to support what I do. I appreciate that. I'm grateful for it. Yeah. But at some point I also have to be honest and say, it's not enough and I can't keep paying for this forever. Yes. I think that's super fair. Like this, and, and this, it's not even like a money thing, is it? It's also like, I want to be a human being who, who gets a return on their blood, sweat, and tears that's tangible. Yes. That feels meaningful. Yes. It's, it's, not, it's not that I that I go, gosh, if I don't get 500 subscribers to pay me $3 a month, I'm going to be eating franks and beans out of a can for the rest of my life. That's that, or, you know, living in a cardboard box. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But what I am saying is what I do has value. Yes. What I do has worth. Mm-hmm. My effort, my time, my research, the, the, the expertise, whatever I do or don't have has value. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've, I've put that to use and I've tried to bring my best to bear on what I do for a long time. And part of it's on me because I've never really made the ask. Uh, I've done little sort of half-hearted attempts and there was a donate button up at one point and there was a PayPal like these kinds of things, mm -hmm. but they, even when they were active, they were 
unused by and large yeah and and that's that's not a you problem that's a that's an everybody on the internet problem because I, yes, i've experienced the same i've i've got two people it ends up being a me problem yeah no 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 i'm just saying it's not your fault is what i'm saying it's it, right. you have to deal with the consequences but like i've got i've got three people two or three people who every single time i put up a video they go to my website hit the donate button and donate a small amount of money now, now that's a convoluted way to have to do it, but th- but they're deliberate about it every time. I'm like, I, I, I again, like you, I'm so grateful that there are three people out there who are like, I, I will actively go and find a way to support you for what you do because I appreciate right. that much. But that's three out of half a million. Right. That's just the way that it is. Right. It sucks, but it's that's the way that it is. Well, and and all of this has kind of led to... Oh, let's see. It's it's knowing when to change, mm-hmm. knowing when to try something new, knowing when to uh, quit doing it the way you've been doing it and getting the same results and simply bemoaning the results that you get yeah. and trying something new. And, and it's, you know, I think we've started having these conversations, you and I, um, but I've started thinking about you know, instead of my painting, for example, only existing on the panels that I make them on, how else can I get these out to people? What other forms can that thing take that might meet someone where they want to be or where they are? Maybe maybe they don't like panels. Maybe they don't want an original piece of art. Maybe they can't afford an original piece of art, but they still want to support what I do. And prints aren't really their thing. Look, I love photography, but I don't have a lot of photographic prints hanging on my wall because that's just not my thing. Yeah. I have a lot of photo books. I love photo books. Some might say I have too many photo books. That's my thing. I love flipping through photo books. I love the way they feel. I love the way they smell. I love seeing multiple pieces of work in print. And if you produce a photo book, I would buy a photo book way quicker than I would buy a print from you Mm. because that's not how I want to consume your work. I want to see a progression. I want to see what you have to say in a body of work, not just here's this one-off print. Partially, the other thing, if I'm being honest, I have a really hard time deciding. Yeah. You know, like, like if, if Martin Rotz said, you know, I'll send you a print for free, pick one and I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, especially That's a hard yeah, one. Yeah, there's a huge variety of... Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, if some, you know, by some weird happening you know gregory crudson said hey pick a print and i'll send it to you i wouldn't be able to do it yeah i'd rather have the book that's why i have the books yes. because then i don't have to decide on that one thing so i'm starting to think about my my stuff in the same way well maybe maybe you don't want something to hang on your wall maybe you want something to put on your sofa or maybe you want something that sits on a shelf or maybe you want something maybe you want a piece of apparel you know, maybe you want this. I've been looking at 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 having these these silk scarves printed and using some of my smaller pieces almost as tartans, mm-hmm. making my own sort of patterns and plaids out of the work that I that I make. Mm-hmm. Maybe that resonates with someone. I have to try something different because what I've been doing doesn't work. On a on a monetary level, I absolutely agree with you. Um, on, on a meaning to people level, I don't agree with you. I think it's worked amazingly for the people who are engaged and, and you can, you can legitimately say it's not enough. I want more people engaged. That's fine because you've got your own goals there and we all do. Um, and it's easy for me to say, cause I do have a following. I realize that. Um, but, but on, on a, on a, like how much it means to those who are regularly engaged with you. That's definitely not true. They, they, they find you incredibly meaningful. And I know they tell you often, you know? Yeah. And I, and I will grant you that. I will absolutely grant you that. Um, it, it, it really comes down to um, a monetary return on the investment. And yeah. not, even, not even from the standpoint of, of uh, I have a number in my head that I have to hit. It's not that at all. No. It's, it's, it's just something to offset what I put into the work. Yeah. 
I mean, that's, you know, and I felt the same way about the book. Yeah. You know, I, I spent three years yeah. writing photography by the letter. Yeah. Even, and rewriting it and designing now, it and redesigning yeah. it. Yeah. Even more now with, with the revision. Yeah. I'll never get, if, if, if I paid myself and, and figured out how many, and I did at one point figured out how many hours I had roughly mm -hmm. invested in, in the research, the writing, the design. I mean, it was just this ridiculous amount yeah, of, yeah. you know, amount of copies that I would have to sell. I don't know. I just, I just feel like I have to try thinking about distribution and thinking about yes. how the work lands, yes. not just how to make it. How to package it for the world. Yeah. So that it comes back to you yeah. in a way that gives back to you as well. Otherwise you are just pouring yourself out. Yes. And part of that means getting over this hurdle of what art with a capital A can, should, mm -hmm. or has to be. Yeah. You know, I think there, and I, I talk to a, a lot of people and, and look, maybe not at my level, you know, but at, at a higher level, art has to be a certain thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jeff Koons is probably not going to release a line of coffee mugs, but there are probably a lot of people out there who would love to see, you know, what, what that would look like. He'd make a killing if he did. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, so I, I think one of the things that that's great about being an emerging artist, let's call it that, or, or, uh, a, a new or, or sort of unsung or unknown artist is, or designer or musician or, or photographer. I mean, you know, take your pick on some level, you are not being held to the same standards as those who have achieved X, Y, or Z. Yes. Yeah. You have some more freedom. I have some more freedom at my level, partially because nobody really knows who I am. Yeah. You don't have the same level of expectation. No. Yeah. No. And I can be as a result of that. I, and, and if you're listening to this and this applies to you, you can be more nimble. We can be more agile. We yes. can, we can try new things that don't have to work because there's not a lot riding on them, frankly. Yeah. But, but then we have to take the joy out of the making because if it doesn't fly and we've risked making it itself and pouring our blood, sweat, tears and hours into making that thing that people went now, nah, not for me has to be enough. Otherwise what we'll give up. Absolutely. And I agree with you a hundred percent, which is why I, I am thinking about what I make. I'm compartmentalizing what I make. Right. And I'm, and I'm thinking about it differently. For example, you know, before we hit the record button, we were, I was telling you about this new series of, of grid variations. Mm. I don't think about these things in the making the way I think about the narrative work. Mm -hmm. I don't put, I, I still bring the same level of, 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 you know, craft and care and, and whatever expertise I may or may not have from a materials and a process standpoint to them. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to think about what the narrative is, what they mean. I don't have to worry about sourcing you know, the, the, the materials, the ephemera, the, the found objects, because there, there is no real narrative or meaning. They're just explorations of color and texture and shape. So I get to, I get to exercise a different side of, of my creative self. And it, in a, in a weird way, it, it almost allows me to separate them from me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if, if, if these don't sell and if I try to do, you know, like, let's say we're looking at, at doing these beautiful linen and silk pillowcases and pillow covers and, and these beautiful silk scarves in my mind, I'm designing for product. Yes. I'm not making art. Right. I mean, did you see, uh, I mean, I didn't know much about him until I watched, uh, this Ewan McGregor series on Halston. Um, and then I went and watched the documentary as well. The New York designer. Do you know? Mm, I didn't see it. I, I know of it, but I didn't watch it. It's an interesting one to watch. In fact, probably just watch the documentary instead, but it's, um, I mean, watch both. They're great. But if you just want a short intro, like the, the one interesting thing about him was that he was this young firecracker fashion designer who everyone got very excited about very quickly, who once he got that notoriety for himself, Bloomingdale's came to him and said, hey, design us a line of clothes that people can afford for our stores, which he did. 
And then the, art, the, the, the fashion community started to look down at him. Right. Because he started to produce products for real people. What's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. Why, wouldn't, why wouldn't you use your artistic talent to do that? And, and, and when you watch it, you're just like, how ridiculous is it that he got hammered or, 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 or judged or put down or as if he's selling out by taking his artistic talents and also on top of the art that he's producing, also producing things that real people can wear in real life that are still beautiful in their own, rego- in their own right, that, that are useful to people. Why is that selling out, making your work useful to people? I don't understand it. It's strange, isn't it? Yeah. And, and on the other side of that, I watched a fabulous little mini documentary about understanding Warhol. And you've got him on the other side taking art to literally sort of a, a, a manufacturing. I mean, he made the factory. So he had these, these you know, multiple anonymous people creating art with, with his signature, his name, his ethos behind it as as sort of a uh you know an assembly line and he was celebrated for it yeah yeah i don't get it i really don't get it but i think it, i mean it doesn't really matter does it what other people think it's just whether we can get to that place in our own heads going it's okay that i make stuff that people need that's all right like why yeah. why wouldn't that be okay it's our own inner judge you've got to get over yeah well, I, th- I think this is one of the reasons I keep coming back to having, you know, such such admiration and continually being inspired by Shepard Fairey. You yes. know, here's a guy who started as a street artist, making stencils, making stickers, putting up his Obey materials everywhere. He branched out into apparel. He made screen print versions of his original pieces. Then he made lithos of the screen prints of the original pieces. You know, then he, he, he's, you know, adding his aesthetic to these giant murals that are now being accepted and paid for by cities and municipalities all over the world. Uh, he's just got this new project making, making uh, uh, ceramic tiles, these custom sort of obey design ceramic tiles that he's doing and doesn't seem to really care how it lands as long as there's an integrity to the making and, and being able to offer a variety of things. I mean, it's mass production on some level. Yeah. You know, he, he has his hand on, on the, uh, the handmade work, but then other people are fulfilling some of the other visions and some of the other ways that, that his work gets out there. And I've seen, I don't know, four or five of his shows. I've met him a few times. He's humble, he's engaging, he's interesting. You know, people have said that he's sold out, but I don't think he has because he started his his entire sort of ethos and 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 mantra was getting as as many people he as he could to see what he did. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's gonna put this obey Andre the Giant face up on a water tower so that everybody that drives by it through the course of the day sees it. Yeah. He's gonna put these these things on t-shirts, he's going to put them like, what's wrong with that? And I, and, and he's had multiple retrospectives in some very respected uh, museums. So obviously the art community hasn't kicked him to the curb and said, well, you're not, you're not part of our group. You know, they've welcomed him in. I, I don't know that there are any rules anymore because there, there are so many levels of appreciation and consumption of the designed image or the artistic image that I don't know that it has to exist in one way anymore. I, no, maybe I'm full of shit. I don't no, know. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I, I'm just thinking about like, like I've got products as well. You know, I've got ways that I've turned what I do into things that hopefully people will buy so that I can keep going. I, I sell a book of my own photographs every year. I didn't choose yeah. to do a calendar. I don't resent people who do. I think that's great. It's just that was my choice to do a little book every year. I don't sell presets. Yeah. I don't resent people who do. Good for you if it works. I don't sell online courses. I give videos away for free. But I did write a book like which which was sprung from a couple of those videos and expanded into my own story and the rest of it. And that's a product now that exists. I'm going to do an audio book of the same. That's a product that exists. I'm finding, finding ways to take the things that I give away for free and have things that spin off those that I can sell as products that people want and will use that then feed back so I can keep going. And I, I personally don't feel any guilt around that. I think that's 
how it should be, right? Otherwise, I have to I have to go back to work. Yes, and that's the nut that I'm trying to crack. When I when I said that at the beginning, you know, I I I can't I can't keep doing this the same way I've been doing it and not see a return. Yes, yeah. That that's that's partially it's partially it's me partially kicking myself in the ass saying, "Look, you can't keep you're in control of how you do this. You can't keep doing this the same way and expecting the results to be different." M- me, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't control how an audience is going to react. We've covered that and I think that's true, absolutely. But what I can do and what I must do is give an audience a different way to connect with what I do. I'm not going to hold the work hostage. I'm not going to hold, you know, any of any of my podcasts hostage behind a paywall because I, I that doesn't I don't believe that that works for me. Mm-hmm. There are people out there that are part of networks or or collectives and that works for them and I think it's great. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. I, I I know of a few podcasts that there are different models out there where you you know either the whole thing is behind a, a paywall or there are a few out there that you know, you can listen to the first 45 minutes or so, and that's free. But then, you know, the, the sort of behind the scenes or the, the, the last 45, that's behind a paywall. Yeah. That's fine. That's yeah. great. Uh, I, I, I could see that part for me more than putting everything behind a paywall. But even that, I don't want to hold the things that I say and do and the conversations that I have hostage. I want you to be able to enjoy them. I'll give you a way to show some sort of monetary appreciation, much in the same way that NPR does a pledge drive every year or KCRW does a pledge drive or PBS back in the day. Mm -hmm. Maybe they still do it. I'm I'm assuming they still do it. They will do pledge drives every year. We're going to give you this stuff for free, but we do need your help to keep doing it. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I I need help to keep doing this. Yeah, I, I think that's very fair. Yeah, very fair. And you're you're also giving people the option. All these people who say that they do really enjoy what you do, maybe they maybe they're not in a place they can support you. That's that's up to them. But you are giving the option, saying, "I, I need to go and get a job for my own sanity and to feel useful again, and to feel like I'm 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 bringing home a decent salary for for the sweat that I'm pouring into something because we need that psychologically. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and here's your shot. Otherwise, I, things will have to change and you will get a lot less of this thing you say you like. And uh, if you're fine with that, I'm fine with that. I'm going to go get a job. If you're not fine with that, here's a way you can and, and give them a very clear, like, here is the way that you can keep this going. And this this is the level I'd need to reach to make that, to, to mean that I'm happy with that then and I can keep going this way. But uh, mm-hmm. short of that, I think, yeah, I think that's very fair. But I, I think there's a very real... You know, we, we, we've talked about Jack Lowe a number of times, and I think this is, this is where Jack has, has done such a great job yeah. at connecting support to real world expenses in what he does, whether it's a, 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 a tank of fuel for his mobile darkroom or, um, you know, uh, the cost of chemistry to produce his plates. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there, are, he, he's made these sort of nebulous, almost existential costs, very tangible yeah. and going, look, here's how much it costs me to do this. This is X number of dollars every time I hit the shutter release. And if I, if I drive, you know, 500 miles to do, to, to, to meet up with people to photograph, this is what that costs. And I'm not saying that you, that you have to, you know, uh, participate but these are the costs that I'm incurring to bring this to you each and every time. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how it works. I mean, I, I kind of, I mean, I love that Jack's actually gone ahead and done his own. He's, he's produced his own platform to do this. And mm-hmm. we, we, mm-hmm. we still have to coax him onto this. We've got to get him on the show. I think it'd yeah. be really cool yeah. to sort of pick his brain on it. But, you know, you kind of hoped years ago that Patreon would be that. Um, that it would kind of, and it, it, it did, I think it did good things in that it did remind people that if you want to see the art you like, you can't just consume it for free. Some people do need the support or that art goes away because they need to pay the bills and that's a, a reality. It did remind people of that. But I think Patreon, I, I mean, I years ago tried to set up a Patreon 
and I just chickened out. There was no way I was going to hit it live because by the time I put in a bunch of rewards, I'm like, I've just created a brand new job for myself on top of everything <laughs> right, else I've got to right. do. There's you, no way yeah. I'm doing yeah, this. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have any time. The whole point is to you to pay for what I'm already doing, not to give myself right. a bunch of extra stuff to do. And now I can't do the thing you want to pay, you, you want to see. So I, right. and I know some people do use Patreon and they sort of go, well, I'm not going to give you anything. This is where you can just support me for what I'm already doing. That's all this is for. And if you want to do it, do it. And, and you know, some, some audiences do that. I, I think it's rare though. And I, I, I don't think I'd be interested to see if I got really, really deliberate about it and threatened to disappear on YouTube or something, if people actually would come in and support that between you and me and obviously everyone who's listening, I, I don't think, I don't think that would happen. I think I'd go away. Even at my even even at my level with the amount of followers I have, I think I would I think I'd disappear. I don't yeah. I don't think people would come in and support that. They'd all complain when it went away, but they but they yes. wouldn't come in and and. Make I it. think they would quickly find another solution because yeah. there is such a saturation of yeah our favorite word content exactly. everywhere. Oh yeah, I mean you spoil for choice. Absolutely, there's tons of stuff out there. Yeah. It's a it's a weird internet entitlement thing. It's 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 not the same in real life. I think if you meet artists in person and you have relationships with them as human beings, that's very different. I think you could stand up and give a talk in your local town where you display your art and say, "Listen, I have to stop doing this. I'm afraid because I can't afford it." Unless you want to support me, I think people would come forward and support you in in in, mm -hmm. in big percentages. But the internet it's just anonymous. People don't really care, and everyone feels entitled to stuff for free. And unless you, unless you get lucky, and, and I realize I've gotten lucky um, so that I can get to the point where I can, at least for now, support myself with what I'm doing, um, yeah, I mean, I think they just expect that everyone does pour out their heart and soul for free so they can enjoy it. And then if you even have the audacity to turn ads on on a video, they start complaining and unsubscribing in numbers because they're outraged. You'd, you'd make them click a skip button to watch this so you could get half a cent. It's like, well, how right. entitled are you? Like, what, what do you really expect? I mean, the, the classic is Squarespace on mine. Like, the minute I started doing ads for Squarespace, and this is years ago now, there was just outrage in the comments. Oh, you're one of those. I can't believe you've done this. I still get them every now and again. And I just said, here's the option. I, I need my time paid for, um, just like you do. And either... Uh, you pay for my time to watch these videos because you're not entitled to watch for free or you let Squarespace pay my time so you can watch for free and you sit through a 40 second mention in this video. But what is not going to happen is I'm going to starve to death, killing myself to make videos for you because you think you're entitled to stuff for free. That's not going to happen. So it's Squarespace where I go back and get a job. Which do you want? And they're still, yeah, but I just don't like seeing them. And they, they weren't back down at that point. It's just complete, complete entitlement. And that's the internet, to, unfortunately. To be fair, though, your Squarespace ads are the most sort of subtle and innocuous <laughs> versions <laughs> of those ads. It's, <laughs> it's eight seconds in and out. It's, it's not, you're not doing, you're not forcing them to watch a commercial. You're not forcing, it's, it's so simple. It, honestly, and, and no disrespect. I barely even notice them anymore. Yeah. Well, thankfully, Squarespace don't know that. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, you're not listening to Marin. You know, go no, go no, listen no, to an no, episode yeah, of Marin's podcast where the first 20 minutes are, you know, ads and, and him talking about where he's appearing next. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's a lot more. I mean, and to be fair to Squarespace, I, I do make sure it's at least 40 seconds on everyone. So the fact that you think it's eight is great because it means I'm doing it in a way that does feel like eight seconds, not 40. Yeah, it feels very transparent, which is, which is great. But again, that that even with that being the case, people are still incredibly entitled and they'll complain. I deserve to watch this for free and you should go and work your ass off so I can watch this for free. And I'm not going to give you anything because you owe me this. Like, I think you right. and I both know, I don't owe anyone anything. And, and, and by the way, I want more than one video a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you on that front. Like, I think like, I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's, and it's not about the engagement. Let me be clear about yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me be very, very clear that the, 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 the people who listen to what I do, and especially those who have written in to, to say 
how something that I have said has affected them or, or, you know, some conversation means something or thank you for having this conversation with this person or, you know, the comments that we, we get lovely comments about this show from listeners regularly. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. It is the sunk cost of producing the work on a, on a monetary level. And, and a lot of that is the art. And again, a lot of that is my fault. I have not made the art a- available in ways that I could or should. It's, it's been, yeah. you know, well, what's the right way to do it? What's, how should I release this? It, do, should I do these? Or should I, but I, I can say that, you know, and you've been very helpful with this in the last several months, um, thinking about how to get originals out and, and use my smaller originals as, as, you know, negatives for the bigger work and, and all of that stuff that we've talked about, that's being put into practice right now. I'm figuring out, I'm in sort of the, the hardware mode of trying to figure out how I can maintain the quality of the work, but, but make the work bigger. Yep. And, and I, I, I think all of this has come from not wanting to keep doing it the same way again and again and again, and, and then keep you know, beating myself up because none of this stuff is going anywhere. Well, but why would it? I'm not giving myself any other option. I'm not, I'm not trying anything new. I'm not, I'm not, you know, as, as Adrian has taught me these past several years, I'm not trying to meet an audience where they are. And I think that's extraordinarily important because there's so much saturation, because there's so much choice. You don't owe me anything. And I know that I have to earn your ears. I have to earn your eyes. I have to earn your dollars. I have to earn that. And I know that. And let, but first I need to get out of my own way. And that's consistently where I fail. Let's be honest. Like, I think we both got the same problem in that we have an allergy to marketing. Yes. I, do, I, do, I don't think either of us actually have, I think we both struggle with this from our conversations. It takes a lot of self-confidence to say, here's a thing I made, you should pay this amount for it. And then, and then talk about it in a way that you believe people should pay that amount for it. Mm-hmm. I think we both struggle with that. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's part of a working artist's job to do that. If you want to sell your work, and it sucks because most of, most artists are terrible at it, but I think it's one of those things, even if we're bad at it, just like some people are are bad at communication. Well, if you want to be in a relationship, you still have to do it and you have to work hard at it. Yeah. Some artists are bad at marketing. Okay. Yeah. But you still have to work at it and you have to do it because it's part of what you do. It sucks, but that's just the way it is. Yes. I mean, it, it, it gets us back to, uh, that conversation with Bill a couple of weeks ago where he, he said, we have to learn to be our own town crier. Yes. Nobody's going to do it for us. That's a challenge, especially for you know, a self-deprecating introvert who doesn't like to put himself center stage. I think he might be British. <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> you wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I am hopeful. I will tell you that. I love the new work. Mm. I'm proud of the new work. I'm, I'm proud of thinking about delivering it in ways that, that feels respectful to the work, but offers a potential customer or, or audience member a different way to experience it and hopefully enjoy it. I'm proud of that. I just have to step that little extra bit out of the way. I'm, 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 I'm almost completely out of my way. In fact, I've, I've ordered uh, samples from, from this, this company I'm partnering with to, to help with fulfillment. And we'll, we'll, we'll see if it, if it's, if the quality is where I'd like it to be, then we'll move forward. And, and I couldn't be more excited about it, you know, and in terms of, of my own, you know, work and, and making things bigger and, and, you know, um, getting the work out there, I've, I've restarted or attempted to restart some of the conversations around getting the work out in public and, and getting it into actual spaces where it can be seen. Because I know that there is nobody on this earth that's going to make their way to my house and just knock on my door and go, hey, do you happen to have any art for sale? Nobody's going to do that. And I think we get stuck there, you know? Yeah. I, I hope this doesn't sound patronizing, but I'm, I'm really proud of you for getting there because it's, 
it's I know what a struggle it's been for you. And I know how much you love the making of it and how much you struggle to get out to the world. And and I think that's the, the challenge for all of us is going, I'm going to get up off the couch and go outside and speak to other people and put my work in front of them and back myself. That's such yeah. a such yeah. a battle for a I mean, I, I think most people relate to that on some level. And I know how you fought yeah. that. And I'm I couldn't be more excited for you that that's where you're getting to. Thank you. I think it's I think it's definitely forwards. And you know what? If 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 in a year's time you can a lot of this podcasting and you are producing work that's going out and people are paying for it uh, in terms of your art, you're finding ways to sort of productize and monetize that stuff and people appreciate it for what it is. I I think that's brilliant. And I think you'll be so much happier for it as well. I think so. I mean, and and part of it is you know, I, I, I could say I would blame it on COVID, but I, I really can't blame it on COVID because I've, I've been this way for years. And if you're listening to this and maybe this resonates with you, we get, we tend to get stuck and I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for, I won't say we, I tend to get stuck in only looking at certain types of work, or I get myopic about my own artwork. And over the past few months, I've gotten out and gone to open studio nights. I've gone to some small gallery shows and, and just sort of tested the waters and seen what's out there. And in a rare moment, Sean, (laughs) I'm going to tell you in every case, I looked at that work and I went, my work is every bit that good in every case. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an indication that, look, I still have a long way to go. Believe me, I, I still have an, an enormous amount of ground to cover. But getting to that point where I look at it and I go, if they can put their work out there, yeah, I can put my work out there. It's a huge hurdle. I can, I can stand toe to toe with this. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, and the only difference between you and them is they went out to put their work out in front of people. Yeah. That's the only difference. They went out there. Yeah. You know, and, and I, you know, I went to these, open studios here in, in DC. And it was so inspiring to see, you know, I'm doing this stuff down in my basement. These people are paying money every month for a studio space Mm. that they go to, to make and sell their art. And that was a huge wake up call. That was a huge, like, like that was the kick in the butt that I needed. Like, I don't have to pay any extra money. I've got this beautiful space that I can make my work. I owe it to that space. I owe it to myself. I owe it to the years of practice. I owe it to the people who have been encouraging and supportive and patient Mm. to put the work out there. And you also realize looking at their work and comparing it to yours, that the missing ingredient was never your talent. It it was, it was marketing. It was, it was putting yourself out. That was doing the legwork and building the relationships and asking to show work and asking more people to look at it and asking people to pay for it. It's that stuff. Yeah. Which is great because it's a smaller problem to solve because you wouldn't be able to solve the no talent problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's so beautiful because there is something out there for everyone. Yeah. You know, and I, th- I think th- there's a rush to judgment if you don't like something to, to, I don't know, potentially even, or at least blame it on talent. And it could just be that you don't like it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I would never say that Basquiat had no talent. I'm just not a big fan of his work. Yeah. Even Warhol, I see what he was trying to do. And after watching this documentary, I have a lot more respect for what he did and how he did it and why he did it than just looking at the end product. Yeah. So I want to get out there and talk about it. I want to talk about my work. I want to tell you know, the stories behind X, Y, or Z piece, whether they're interesting, whether they're funny, whether they're dramatic, like whatever it is, I'm ready to talk about it. I'm ready to put myself out there and let the chips fall where they may, instead of hiding behind my own sort of fear and, and, you know, simply stocking my basement with paintings. (laughs) I mean, it's taken, it's been a journey, hasn't it? I mean, this, cause this is the first time and I've only known you the last four or five years, but I mean, it's the first time I've heard you talk about like, like this about your work, which is really exciting. 
And I think, I think you do just hit a saturation point where you're fed up enough to go, all right, I just have to do this now. This is ridiculous. You know? Yeah. It's the one thing I'm avoiding and I'm holding myself back. Well, and, and I think part of it was, was getting to this point of, I can't keep doing this the way I'm doing it. Yes. And if it means it, I either need to change the way I'm doing it and give myself a chance to succeed and give myself a chance to get some other result, or I have to stop doing this because the toll that it's taking on me to do it the way that I've been doing it is too much. And it's, it's disrespectful to your talent and everyone who supported you to just give up without taking that risk at least. Yes. Yes. I, I would rather, you know, fall on my face knowing that I tried something different and, and something else different and something else different than to just keep doing it the way I'm doing it and accept that it's not going anywhere. Accept that, that well, that's just, you know, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, we can't use any of that. So should we start now? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do, 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 should we use that? We should. Ab- do you think it's we should absolutely? Is it relevant? Oh my gosh, Jeffrey, that's one of the best ones we've done. What are you talking about? For my for my money, anyway. That's that's amazing stuff. Yeah. I right, thank you for sharing it too, because it's it's vulnerable to share that stuff. You know, it's 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 difficult stuff. It's stuff we all struggle with, but we don't talk about enough. And I think it's something everyone relates to. I just can't keep doing. I can't keep hiding. Sean. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at some of the work that I'm doing and I go, what is the worst that can happen, Jeffrey? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then I, and then I go, I, I flip that coin and I go, okay, what's the best that can happen? Yeah. The best thing that can happen is you, you walk into this place and there's some of your work hanging on the wall or or you get an email from someone and says, I, I like this piece so much. I would like to, I'd like to trade you money for this piece because I want to put this in my home because I want, I want to walk by this piece every day. I want to see this piece in my life, in my home, in my office, in my whatever. Yeah. And I'm not giving people the opportunity for that because I'm scared. Yeah. But it sounds like you're getting fed up with your own fear. <laughs> What does it serve? Nothing. If I truly want to be of service to an audience, to an idea, to a narrative, to a canvas, to whatever it is, if I, if I truly want to be of service, and I do, then what, what does fear serve? Fear serves yourself every time. It's just you trying to keep yourself safe. And that's not what anyone really wants their life to be about. So you have to call yourself on it at some point, which you are. And if I'm being honest, Sean, I'm so tired of being afraid. Mm. It's exhausting. Yeah. And when you, when you break it down, you, you realize, like you said, what am I afraid of? What is that worst? Don't be, don't apologize. What, what is the worst case scenario you're, you're afraid of? It's at some point it's a case of looking that fear in the face and asking what is that really about? What am I really trying to protect? What is the worst thing that's going to happen? What's the worst case scenario I'm so terrified of? Because when you take it beyond the feeling and drag it out into the cold light of day and it suddenly doesn't start to make any sense anymore and you realize like you are at the moment what you're actually losing, then you almost fear almost turns to anger, doesn't it? Like like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just really a lot. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm angry that I'm, I'm, I'm sabotaging my own talent in the one life that I have, because I, I, I'm, I'm a slave to this emotion that we all feel. That I'm, that I'm, that I'm listening to too much, as if it's the answer or it's, it's the final truth, and it's not. It's just an emotion, and we know what those are. You know, they're not, they're not always right. They're not always wise. They're just emotions. And it's and, and if and if it stops you showing your work to the world, it's definitely not right. Because I, I don't believe in any world where where the right thing to do is to make things and never show anybody or share it with people. 
So it's so it's not helpful and it's wrong, in which case it needs to get put in perspective. And I'm really proud that you're doing that. Subscribe to Jeffrey Sidoris Everything in your favorite podcast app to get every episode of Deep Natter, along with my other show, Process Driven, and everything else I release all in one feed. If this conversation resonated with you and you'd like to talk about it, email me at talkback at jeffreysedoris.com. That's talkback, all one word, at J-E-F-F-E-R-Y-S-A-D-D-O-R-I-S.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter and Instagram at Jeffrey Sidoris. Connect with Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Tuck. That's S E A N T U C K. On his website at Sean Tucker.photography or by searching for Sean Tucker on YouTube. The music in this episode is by Duff Music and is available through Artlist, which is a terrific source of music, sound effects, and now video for podcasters, filmmakers, and YouTubers. Follow the link in the show notes to get two months free when you sign up for an annual plan. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. We'll be back next week with another one, and we'd love to have you join us.